like night and day, especially if you decide which industry you're going to go in, get, go into. Um, then in chapter two, guys, we talked about the roles and responsibilities of construction project managers. So we kind of, we kind of went through a whole process of, of talking about some of the characteristics and traits that you're going to need in order to be successful at this game. Um, what is the, what, what does a project manager do? You know, why are they, why are they on site? You know, they kind of just manage the entire site guys. And, you know, you, you know, that, that, that's pretty much what they do. Then the last time we were in here, guys, we talked a little bit about estimating. Um, and I think, um, I think one of the things that if, if you didn't get anything out of the estimate, you know, we had, a, we had about four different types of estimations and I'm, I'm dealing with one right now, guys. I, um, let me see. Um, and there's one where you um, you have a symbol bill, which you know you look at what kind of structure you build. And say, for instance, if I'm building a if I'm building a a, a, a hospital, so a hospital, all the gas lines and stuff like that is, that runs in the walls and all the electrical stuff, you know, a hospital room is going to be more expensive than if I just did a residential bedroom. So you can estimate based on assemblies. So in a hospital, it may be $300 per square feet to build. And on a residential bedroom, it may be $80 a square feet to build. So if somebody gave you a hospital and said, I got 400 feet, a 400 square feet of hospital room I need to build, you just simply multiply that 300 by that 400 feet. Vice versa, if somebody gives you a, a, a residential bedroom, then you do it by, if it's 90, um, 90 square, $90 per square feet, you do it by that. So we kind of talked about those different ways. Now, the best way to quote, guys, keep this in mind, is going to be your line item. Your line item estimate. So you're going you're gonna to look at what it takes to build. You guys, you got to have a complete scope of work. Every item in that, whatever it is you're going to do, you need to have a line item for everything you do. Um, once again, I like to, let me, let me go ahead and take your screen right quick. Like, um, so let me see if I can find one right quick. Like, so this thing right here, like I said, man, we may be, I'm struggling streaming right now. So this is a, this is a job right here. Which job this is? Remove the drive. Yeah, let's look at this job right here. How do I have that? Yeah, I'm going to look at the estimates. That makes it easy. So if I look at this job right here, so I may have this guy pull this up. And as you can see this estimate right here. So I got all these different categories now. So categories is one thing. But then with inside each one of the categories, guys, I have line items inside of those categories. So we can go right here and I'm gonna hit on that. We have engineering fees. Um, and then we, I did it per, you know, like each engineer cost me about $300 to deal with an engineer. If I got to deal with them, probably cost me about $300 an hour. They typically charge me an hour if I got to deal with them. Um, so I put enough in there for that. Site survey, permits, sewer impacts and stuff like that. So you go through this whole process of construction. So we got site work excavation. We have temporary site services. That's like your, your porta pod, your um, your dump, well, not your dumpster, uh, your 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 temporary power. And you got your foundation. Foundation is broken down into footings, foundation, main level slab, pump trucks that you're gonna use. You got framing. So framing is broken down to a whole bunch of these guys as well. So, so guys, you're going to go through this entire process. You might have 200 line items and you have meticulously went through that project. You measure everything out on that project to make sure it's accurate. And each line item has a number associated with it. And that's what it's going to cost to do each one of those line items. That is probably going to be the closest you're going to get, guys. And that's that's typically going to be that's going to get you within five plus or minus five percent of what that house or what that structure is really going to cost you. Now, if I just look at the assembly method, 
assembly method is one I just kind of look at it and you just say, well, you know, this right here is going to be used for this. Um, you know, I could do that, but it's, it's not going to be detailed and catered to those particular plans, which is the problem you're going to run into. Are there any questions on that, guys? Anybody got questions? Okay. So when you when you guys out there, especially if you're a subcontractor, if you're a subcontractor, you like Mr. Scott, and you do like you do a lot of decks and stuff like that. Um, even on a deck, I would do a line item breakdown. You know, this is you know this is how many six by six posts it's going to take. This is how many hangers I'm going to need. This is how many two by ten flooring joists I'm going to need. This is how many deck boards I'm going to need. This is how many. Yeah, I would, uh, Mr. Scott, I would even have that thing wired all the way down to how many. I would even try to calculate the amount of screws on you on those deck boards. I, I would do that. And that'll get you used to getting really, really, you got to get really tight because the name of the game, guys, name of the game is to, number one, you need to be able to add value to that customer. When I say add value to that customer, um, you don't want to be so high they can't afford you, but you don't want to be so low that you leave money on the table, which is why I keep telling you guys, always consult or engage with people that's in the same business that you're in. Quick question, Ms. Starr. Hit me. So, like what you just described, um, do you have to do that for every, every deck? Like, once you say do the first one and put all that stuff in, you got to do that for everyone or the, the program will uh, kind of adjust according to the uh, square footage or whatever. Uh, yeah. What you're going to do is you're going to, now, once you get all this information in, what's up, man? How you doing? Good, good. Once you get all that information in, right? Like, like we got yeah. all this information in, right? Right. So once I get this information in, what I'm going to do after that is I'm only going to, like, if, if, if you, this is this right here program, this right here, this system I got right here. So this whole job right here, which is, uh, whose job is this? This is Wendell, Mr. Wendell Harris' job. I hadn't worked on it yet, but I'm just on you. This is Mr. One. You might know him, man. You might run in. You guys might run into him. I'm probably not gonna get that job, guys. I just got finished talking to him. I ran him off. But um, but this is this job right here. And let's just say, for instance, um, I quoted his job out, and this is what I came up with. Well, if I want to build a house for somebody else, you know what's gonna change is the plans, right? So, like, if you're doing a deck, you did a deck over here at this house. You go do a deck over here at this other house where well, the plans is going to change, but all the numbers ought to be the same. The, the, the amount that you pay for each screw, that should be consistent. That should be the same. That should be a constant. The amount that you pay for the deck boards should still be the same. The only difference is you change the square footage of length. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. So that's all. That's, you what, that, that's pretty much what I'm asking you. So once you got the constant, you, uh, and you move to another debt, and so what I'm asking is, in this program, once you change the square footage of it, it should adjust the numbers for you. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Okay. Once you once yeah, you that's what I'm up, asking. Like on this right here, what's gonna happen is. I'm going to upload some plans on this right here. Now, I hadn't, I uploaded these plans on this right here. I hadn't, I hadn't adjusted yet because I don't, I don't even think I'm going to do this job. I, I, I called a guy and told him this is probably not going to work. His expectations are way too different. But, um, but once you, once you, once you upload another set of plans on here, you know how I highlighted it last time? I highlighted the areas that, that we're going to use. Yeah. Purple. It's going right. to change based on the plans that I put in. And it's going to change those numbers. But the cost is still the same. Now, let me say this right here, man. Don't get so stuck on that because if you, if, if you did a deck, if you do a deck this year, 
you turn around and do another deck next year, you probably want to adjust that for inflation. Does that make sense? Yeah. So don't 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 just don't just get these numbers in here and get content with these numbers that you're using and, and just don't change that. You gotta always be reaching out to the market and finding out what cost is. You gotta always be going on Lowe's and Home Depot or wherever you get your supplies from and make sure you have updated current costs. So I guess maybe I'm not what I'm concerned with is not is uh quantity do you have to put quantity in there every time no because if you got everything okay say for instance all right I, that's a great question man because i you know i didn't i didn't do a great job at breaking it all down for you all right all right you remember how we built that do you remember how we built that that um those walls and that 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 floor and stuff y'all remember y'all did that out there Y'all remember that? Yeah. Okay. So now, when I went and calculated that, I went to Lowe's. I bought all the lumber for that, right? And I figured, okay, we're going to need X amount of, let's say we, we had to have 10 2 by 10 for the floor in George, right? And we're going to have, um, we're going to have, um, for my girders, I had to have uh, 2 by 12s. I had to have five 2 by 12s for my girders, right? I had to get a box of nails, right? I had to get some um, seal plates, the bottom plates. You remember how we did the bottom plates? I had to get the studs for the walls, right? I had to get the OSB. And I calculate that Johnny on the spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take whatever I so Lowe's is going to give me a ticket. They're going to give me a receipt, right? You know what I'm talking about? Lowe's going to give me a receipt. So Lowe's receipt was seven hundred dollars. Y'all with me on that? Lowe's charged me seven hundred dollars, and when I went and took the measurements of that box that we did out there, it was six by ten. Y'all with me on that? You with me on that, Mr. Scott? You with me so far? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. So that six by ten is sixty square feet. You with me on that? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 700 that I got that ticket, because that's what it, that all the materials and supplies that I needed to get for that right there cost me $7,700. I'm going to divide it by that 60 square feet, and that's going to give me the cost that I spent on lumber per square feet. Does that make sense? Yes, it does now. Okay, so now hold, I'm, I'm not I'm not finished now. Huh? Yeah, after you measure that box, well, you should have done. You should have measured that from the front end. And the reason you you know because you you got to know what kind of lumber you got to get. So you know you need to measure. Like you get the plans, right? The plans are gonna tell you this is the square foot right here. So you need to, so you use you use that template in order to figure out, figure all that out. Hold on just a second, man. My, uh, I hate this right here. They always bother me. I'm sorry, guys. They would mess with me. All right, so so this right here end up being. Let me just let's just look at what you're gonna pay per square foot on this thing. All right. So we are at seven hundred divided by sixty. So that thing costing us eleven dollars and sixty-seven cents a square feet. So it's gonna be eleven point six seven. So each square foot. 
a framing that I do like that, the materials is going to cost me $11.67 per square feet. That's what you're going to put on one of these little things right here. Like, say, for instance, I got my framing number right here. You see how I got that framing, that framing line item right there? The framing line item says I have 4,036 square feet. And this particular house was at $18.50 um, per square feet, which means that the lumber package on that house is going to cost me $74,000. I see how you got it. Yeah. And you're going to do every line item like that. You're going to go to your deck now. You're going to go to your tile. You're going to go to your bricks. You can even do the bricks on the house. You're going to go to everything. And, and when you start generating, and that's why the guy, the more you do, the more, the more historical, the more historical information that you that you get that you can put into your data. It makes your cost more accurate and more accurate and more detailed. Questions? Okay. That's how you guys are coming up with your cost. That's the best way to do it, man, to get all these different things, man, and just line item per line item. And then once you get all them line items done, man, I mean, at the end of the day, you're going to have a big number. You can put your markup on here. You can do it however you're going to do it. Okay. Let me see. That's going to go back here. All right. So we talked about that, guys. We went over those estimates, man. That's the, that's the best way to do it, guys. I just got finished. Um, i share this right here with you guys. I just... um. I talked to this guy and he sent me, he sent me a set of plans. It's a phase. I'll post that with you. I have a go right there. So he sent me these set of plans right here. Nice house, man. It's a pretty house. All right. So when I looked at this house, let's just let's just look at this right. So guys, the last three houses I did, did two. Two in Ross Bridge and one in Trustville. Yeah. So if I took if, if I, I, I took the data from those last three houses, right? I, I saw how much that house cost me, right? But this is this is this is what it cost me. And then I took the square foot, I really I just took the square foot um heating and cool and I divided, I divided the two. So that gives me that first one that we were talking about, that assembly method. So when I did that, that gave me $200 a square feet. Basically, when I took the average of all three of those, I was at $200 a square feet. So this guy gave me this house here. Um, this thing is 8,459 square feet, right? Oh yeah, you, you think this song? Hold on just a second. <laughs> so I told the guy, let me just let me let me blow it up for you guys. You guys see it right there. This, this house is eight thousand four hundred. That's everything. Now, guys, if you're calculating a house like I did that, like I did that one house, um, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use the main level. Let me kind of move it over here so you can see it. So. He's going to finish out some of the basement. He's going to finish out the main level, which that, that comes standard, right? Which is 5,736 square feet. What are you going to finish? With me on that? Then he's going to come in and he got unfinished basement. You don't have to, I wouldn't calculate that one. Man. But I, I will calculate that garage because you got to sheetrock the garage. The porches, guys. Don't you got to frame over the porches? It's a cup porch. You got to frame over there. You got to frame stuff over there. So, so when you when you get down to it, man, he he he, he floating it around. I just let's just say sixty. Like what? Uh, let's let's not guess about it. Let's, let's go ahead and see. Five seven three six plus 
Let me see, 783 plus 917. That guy's at 7,436 square feet. Y'all with me on that? Y'all with me? All right, finish. Finish means that you finished it out. You painted it. You put sheet rock up. Unfinished means you just got studs, walls. You can see the studs and the walls. You can see everything. Does that make sense? That means it's ready to, uh, unfinished, you ain't ready to live in. You got no plugs and you ain't got none of that. It's just open space. You can see the wires in the wall, you know. Finish means something like this, right? Everything, painted, baseboard, trim, everything up there. All right, so this guy is, is at, at around 7,436 square feet. Y'all remember the other houses I did, they're they floating around $200 a foot, right? So I'm just going to simply multiply this by 200. That gives me 1,487,200. So that's around what his house is going to cost. Now, here's the thing. You remember we talked about assembly? So that's what we're doing, assembly method right now. So the assembly method don't take long. Y'all see how I just calculated that real quick? Now, you're going to be floating around 15% plus or minus. So I'm going to just say, let me see, times. 0.15. So I could be off almost $200,000 on that. That's a big number to be off. You see what I'm saying? It's a big number to be because you, you ain't going to be accurate, man. So I could be, but if let's just say, for instance, worst case scenario, let's say the house, let's say he was $200,000, I, I was $200,000 above and I should be $200,000 below that $1.4 million. So he's still going to be around, uh, let me see, plus one, four, five, oh, one, two, three. He's still going to be at 1.2 million. <laughs> so I go to the guy. I'm going to tell you how to do it, guys. I'm going to tell you how you, do, how you do stuff. So the I go to his loan person, the person that's generating the loan for him. I don't know if I should be doing this. It may not be good, guys. Don't tell on me if it is. If it's bad, don't tell on me. Um, I went to the loan girl that, that, that serviced his loan, that's going that's generated his loan and got him approved. And I said, how much is he qualified for? He was qualified for 700000 So y'all know what that means, right? I'm wasting my time. I'm wasting my time in two different directions because number one, he's not going to have, this is what he, look here, this, we, this guy's talking about 8,459 square feet. And he want to get this for $700,000. What is that telling you? That's telling you that he has a unreasonable expectation on what cost is. There is no need for me to even deal with him anymore. I chopped him off, but I chopped him off in a real good way. You know, I, I told him, say, look, we could, um, I said, look, here's what you could do. And, and you can do this right here too, Mr. Scott. You can do this on decks. You know, you don't have to just be on a full house. I said, look, this is kind of where you're at. You're around one. I said, first of all, I'll explain to him what a, what a, um, what an estimate versus a quote is. We do know the difference between estimate and quotes, right? Like you doing, Portia? Of course, you, right. you know you can. You can't. You probably can't talk right now, can you? But um, but um, but guys, um. So what I what I did was I told him that um. I tell him I told him that you know it it, it take a lot of time. Yeah, you you see how I just came up with that one quote for the assembly type. This quote right here, this right here. If I do one of these right here, this thing right here takes me time, guys. It takes me about sometimes it might take me a week to get all this stuff in. You know, because I'm I'm trying to bid all this stuff right here. It might take me a week. That was a good example right there. Let me see. Probably this right here would be a good one. Yeah, this this would be okay. So you can you can see, yeah, it'd take me about a week to get all this information in. You follow me? I'm not it'd take me about a week and a half. Well, it's not just big. I'm 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 doing it line item per line item. Just like we just did that that lumber thing out there. I'm doing every line item like that. So that takes time for me to put all that stuff in. 
I got to get square footage for every last one of them line items. Does that make sense? So that takes me, that takes my, he's sucking up my time now. So I need to get paid for it. So, you know, I told the guy, I said, look, man, you can, you can pay me $400 to do this quote for you. If you use me as the builder, I'll charge that back to you. You see, you get it back. But if you're not going to use me as a builder, you still have a quote that you can go out and use if you deal with another building. You see? But you need to pay me $400 before I do a quote. Now, estimate, I sat there and told him, I said, that house is going to be about $1.4 million, plus, plus or minus 15%. He said, no, man, you way outside of my zone. I said, all right, thank you. There's no need. Guys, when, you, when you're in that situation, man, there's no need. Oh, man, well, let's see what we can do. No, there, there, there's no need. There, there, don't, don't go there. If anything, let them come back to you and say, well, you know, I talked about it, man. You know, I could probably do about 1.1 1. 1 million. Where, where you at? Now we can kind of talk a little bit. Now he kind of right. has the expectations talking up there but we can't you at seven hundred thousand. that's double what it's really gonna cost you to do we ain't there yet we can't talk so you guys keep that in mind sometimes you don't and you don't want to be having wasting your time with folks man we ain't, we ain't got time for that so guys that's what we talked about last time anybody got any other questions on that on estimates this right here yeah, this is the best one. This is called we, we're gonna we, let's let's look at it just right quick. Like let me, let me, let's do this right here. Thank you guys for my screen. I think I got one right here. Let's see. Let me uh, I think you grab your screen. This is the this is the this is the slide. So last time, but let me just let me just pop through it right quick. Like just make sure you know because we we went over this right here. I just oh hold on. Anticipated cost materials. Webster's Dictionary. To arrive at an off estimate. Estimate is to arrive at an often accurate, but usually only approximate statement of cost of a job to be done. Um, here's another definition of it. The anticipated cost of materials, labor, equipment, or any combination of these for a proposed construction project. Uh, Webster's given dictionary uh, definition of it, an approximation of probable construction cost. See, guys, that's what an estimate is. Now. The anticipated approximate cost of construction, it is not the cost. See, a quote would be giving the cost. The estimate is just, just what it is. It's just it's approximation, guys. And, and typically, guys, like we talked about last time, supports owner's decision. So the estimate is going to be used so that the owner can kind of look at it and say whether or not they want to get into it, right? You, you know, should I build this house or do I have the resources to build this house? That's what the estimate is going to help you figure out. It also assists the designers in making material decisions. So you know, if the, if, the, if, the, if the owner is saying that, hey, I got a budget on this right here, and you got somebody designing stuff that's very expensive, well, this is where the estimate kicks in and say, hey, this is going to be too expensive. So kind of keep everybody in place. All right. It's a critical tool to define general contractor and subcontractor bid price. So that's, that's kind of what we use this for, just kind of generalization. And this is what we had up last time. So you got... You got the square footage method and the and the assembly. See, you kind of uh, actually actually I said the assembly was fifteen percent, but it's actually ten plus or minus ten percent. But the one that we want to use, the one when I had each one of these things itemized like this right here, that's called the unit price. You take each one of the line item and put a unit price on it, and we develop the unit for everything that you're gonna do in that in that structure, whether you commercial or residential. Notice that it takes longer. See, I devised that thing in a couple of minutes. <laughs> you see, I, I devised that first one in a couple of minutes. You yeah, see this right here? All right, so if I go to, let's just say, let's go to um, foundation. See, each one of these measurements is a unit measurement. 
square footage, linear feet, feet, square feet, units. Square feet is a unit, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to figure out what it costs per square feet, right? And then you're going to add, you're going to find out the quantity. That's a unit cost. Correct. But on each individual item, each. And that's why, guys, you have got to know what's involved in construction. Somebody said, hey, man, I need you to build this room out right here. I need, I need this room right here built. Number one, you need to know you got to get some concrete, right? You got to pour that concrete. You got to form the concrete. You got to have some gravel up under the concrete. You got to have vapor barrier. So I think some of you guys, and some of you guys, like, like uh, Connie, it, 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 it'll make you feel like this stuff is overwhelming because if you don't know all the things that's involved in the construction, what you get there from? That, 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 that I kind of throw you off. But that's why you're here. You're here to learn about construction, not in this particular class. That's why you took that framing class. So you know, okay, well, I know floor and drawers involved. I know wall stairs involved. So you know that now. But now you need to, you know, now you're taking concrete. So concrete is involved. Paper barriers is involved. Drain tiles involved. So the more you understand construction, the more you understand how things is built, the better you are going to be at these unit costs. Because you can break that. Guys, you know what I did on this right here? I developed this whole thing right here. Once I develop, I just, I just, I just it gets better and better every time I add something to it. But guys, I did this. This is this is how you build a house right here. So you start out with the permitting stuff, the admin stuff. Then you got to get the site work, got to get your excavation done. So you know how I'm going in order? I'm actually going very similar to the code book. Then you got your site services. So once you get all that stuff out there, you get your permit and all that stuff, and you got to excavate and stuff. You need to have some porta paws. You got to have some power for your subcontractor to come out there and do that thing, right? Then you got your foundation. Then once you get your foundation put in, you can frame on top of your foundation. Then you can stick your windows in. Then you can come in and do your rough plumbing. Then you can put your roof in. So your plumbing can come before the roof. So I'm building the house, and you guys can see it like that. Then you're going to come in. I let my mechanical guy come in after the plumber. Then the electrician come around next because it's easy for the electrician to run his wires around everybody else's stuff. Does that make sense? Then once all the roughs get done, you're going to do the insulation. Once the insulation gets done, you're going to do the drywall. That makes sense? Once the drywall gets done, you're probably going to do the floor and the interior trim. Depends on what kind of floor you put in. Then you're going to come in and you're going to paint. You're going to put your first coat of paint on. Then I'm going to let my cabinets guy come in. Then I'm going to let my appliance guys come put this stuff out. Then I'm going to call everybody back to come do their set outs. I'm going to call the plumber back to put his fixtures in. I'm going to call the electrician back to put their light fixtures up. I'm going to call the mechanical guy to come in and connect the units and set the units outside. Then I'm, I'm, I already got my driveways and stuff. I'm pouring my driveways and stuff now. Then I got my landscaping going on. Then once the landscaping is done, I'm going to clean that house up. I'm going to get away from it. I love the organization. <laughs> I, and then, uh, hey, well, thanks, man. Thanks, thanks. But, but I'm showing you guys that this right here, you guys need to know what's involved. And the reason I was able to quote this out the way I quote it out is because I know what's involved. If you Let's just, if you mess around and overlook one of these line items, like I told you, my friend did. Let's say you overlook this drywall line item. <laughs> and you missed that $6,800, basically $7,000, right? So when you're doing that job, you're going to be, you, oh, man, I got to do my drywall now. And you left out $7,000. Guess where that money going to come from? Cause you signed a contract, right? Yeah. Now you got it. Now you you gonna have to you gonna have to cough up. You see that you see that nineteen thousand dollars right there, twenty thousand dollars right there on profit. You gonna have to cough that up out of there now. <laughs> I know, man. And I didn't have to see the reason I can sit here and laugh about it, talk about it, Kanye, kind of, man, is because I didn't have to do that. 
that's why if you're going to be in this game, you better have your you better have your game together. And, um, and you got to be detailed, man. But now here, really, really, to be honest with you guys, this really shouldn't be something. That, if I'm the build, I should be doing this stuff. I should hire somebody to do this stuff. Um, you know, eventually I will. Eventually, you know, I, my, my daughter's boyfriend is supposed to be um, jumping on board to help me do these calculations and stuff because, he's, you know, he's doing some kind of engineering major. So he, he's supposed to be helping me out with this stuff, man. But, but guys, I know it's a lot. I know it's a lot. Um, and I know my internet is getting bad. Let me see if my internet, these guys right here, my buddy, man, hopefully he come back, man. I, my, if my internet get on the stage, I get knocked off, guys. Remember, I'm recording this right here. So at least I think I'll record it. Dang it. I'm recording this. Well, this time we're going to have two recordings on here, guys. God dog it. All right. Yeah, it was recording right over here. My bad. We're gonna have two of them. All right. So, so that's how you want to look at this, guys. Let me let me get back. Let me grab the screen again. Okay. So that's kind of what we're looking at, guys. That's that's how you want to look at it. So, um, you got to get those calls right. Um. You can't be missing. This is this is critical, guys. These, this, these are critical steps. Um, you miss one of them lines, you're in trouble. You, miss, you can lose a lot of money, man. You're out here floating around. You can lose a lot of money like that. Okay. Let me see what else we talked about. Talked about. Uh, and that's what we're talking about, man. Good scope. Adequate preparation time. Take take time, man. Tell them, man, nothing wrong. Don't, don't be trying to, don't rush. Be anxious for nothing. Yeah, that's a Bible verse. Estimated skill mythology employed, guys. And we, we kind of talked about that. I, I, I talked about all this right here last time, guys. So ain't, ain't no use to me. I'm just kind of making sure I got everything. We went over this little floor chart right here. Kind of show you how the process works. Um, before you start, check instructions to bidders. Well, that's commercial. Let me see. Um... Okay, yeah, I did go over it. I'm just making sure I didn't. All right, here we go. Here we go. Types of calls. We did talk about this. We talked about different types of calls. We talked about materials, wages, and stuff like that. Overhead. These are the guys. These are the guys. You know, I get, man, I'm telling you, man, I get so irritated, man. People, people ask me, man, I got an ax to grind when it comes down to real estate agents, man. I don't know if any of you guys are real estate agents. <laughs> I usually have an ax to grind on. My wife's a real estate agent, so I'm not, I'm not too harsh on her, man. But if guys, if you want to make the most amount of money for what you do, real estate agent is the way to go. I did a YouTube video on that. You guys ought to check it out. I break down what a plumber makes per hour. I broke down what I make per hour. It ain't what you think it is. Yeah. Uh, one time, I built a house one time, guys, where... I would have been better off working at McDonald's. That's so much time I spent out there. <laughs> All right, guys, but the only thing that you guys need to understand is, guys, you better produce a profit, man. If you're running a company, you better get a profit. You mess around and, and, and don't get a profit, you, you rest be assured your, 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 your company is starting to die. And guys, companies... A company don't become profitable. It takes about five years. See that? That's why. That's why you shouldn't be so hard on yourself. Some of you younger guys is out here trying to get going. Even some, some just, just all you guys. Um, it takes about five years to be profitable because some things you just don't know. Like me and me and Mr. Scott just were talking about yes, was it yesterday or day before yesterday? Yeah. You put your Tuesday. Yeah, so you get your. If we, I'm gonna use a deck, Mr. Scott. We use a deck. So you got your materials for the deck, right? You put that. If, if you quote, you got your materials for the deck. You got your labor for your deck. Then you need to have your profit for the deck. And really, to be honest with you, it should be thirty-three percent. So if you're doing a deck, you really need to be trying to get by thirty-three percent profit margins off of that. But if you get in there and do the work yourself, 
you got to pay yourself too. So that really means you get 66%. Because there is a portion of your money need to go back to the growth, the growth of the company, at least 10%. But if you don't pay yourself, if, if you go do a job and you charge somebody the labor and the and the profit, but you do, I'm sorry, you got the materials and the profit and you do the labor, you just cheated yourself. Because somebody had to do the work. And if you did it, you got to pay yourself. Me and this guy over here, I just came, I, I had to help him put a window in, you know, instead of, because the framers don't like to come out and do a small job. They're small jobs, right? You know, I don't want to call the framers out there to do a little small job, man. So I just went over there and did it. Me and him went over there and did it. We write checks out to ourselves for that particular thing. You're going to pay somebody. Pay yourself. Matter of fact, guys, when you get your paycheck, you guys get a paycheck. If you work at, I don't care where you work at. If you work at Birmingham Waterworks, when you get your check at the end of two weeks or whatever you get, snatch 10% off the top, man, and pay yourself. Put it in the bank. This is me. I mean, you guys pay your bills, right? Y'all pay your bills. Don't, don't pay your I, You know, I don't even pay my bills. I pay me first. Pay me 10%. Whatever my check. 10, this is mine. I put it over here. Now I go ahead and pay everybody else. But companies don't become profitable, man. And it takes about five years, five to seven years in most cases, man. So if you guys are sitting around here and, 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 and you can't see long term and you won't quit, you want everything quick, what's wrong with this generation now, man? Generally, they want everything. McDonald's to mess them up. You know, microwaves and stuff. You just put it in there, turn it on, boom. Now you got it. No, man. Guys, things take time. It's going to take time. This is a Gantt chart, by the way, because this is going to be, this is going to be what you, well, there we go. We're in the scheduling now. Now, this is where, this is, guys, this will make a break. If somebody, guys, schedule, you got the plan. Every, you guys see this right here, Gantt chart right here? This, this is a Gantt chart. And what it does is every, this is this is the framing. Like say, for this, no, this right here is the frame. Say this right here is the permit. So the top, I'll, just, I'll use this right here. So everybody can, this top right here, let's just say this right here. This is this is a week. Well, this is one day. We want these things broken up in one day, right? So it's going to take me one day to get my permits. You see? Then I'm going to move down to the next day. It's going to take me about another day. To do this, but it's moving in that line. So it's gonna take me three days to get a porta pod put out there. And then that's how I, this is called a Gantt chart. I hadn't I hadn't went in went in it yet. I'm just showing you that because that's the picture that I put up there. Um but the one thing that you guys gotta understand is your schedule is critical. If you get off your schedule, I'm gonna tell you something, guys. If somebody set you back, let's say for instance, you're supposed to get the plumbing, the, the plumbing signed off on permits today. And you didn't get it signed off. The plumbing rough. So you had the beginning phases of the house. You got the plumbing rough, right? And you didn't get it signed off. If it's at the beginning of a project, that's going to set you back two weeks on the back end. So now you <laughs> got it. I'm telling you. If, if at the beginning of a project, you get delayed one day, that's going to set you back two weeks on the end of the project. So now you told the homeowner it was going to take you six months. Now you got delayed on the very first day. Now it's going to take you six months and two weeks. All right, guys, I'm looking at this right here, guys. We're going to define scheduling. We're going to recognize when schedules are needed. We're going to differentiate among the different methods of scheduling. And we're going to recognize the purpose and uses of bar chart, matrix, and networks. And I think that, 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 that one of them is a Gantt chart. Let's look at a Gantt chart, guys. But it, um, scheduling is the process of listing a number of duties or events in the sequence that they will occur. That's what it is. Everything happens at the right time. And let me tell you something else, too, guys. Don't want to call people out too soon. 
Does that make sense? That's in any project. Notice how I got this right here thing right here set up, guys. This thing ain't moving. Notice how I got this right. I got this right here. This is how my schedule works. So my schedule goes, it goes down. Y'all understand that? All right. So now if I call, let's let, let's look right here, guys. So if we if we're on a rough phase of a house, we we're in the walls, we we're roughing everything in. What if I call my plumber? What if I call my electrical guy out before my plumber get a chance to do his stuff? What kind of problem do you guys think we're gonna have? I do. Does anybody think we're gonna have problems? Anybody think we're gonna have problems? Uh, y'all, y'all think everything can run smooth? So the electrician showed up before the plumber showed up. Now you gotta look around your water. Huh? You have to look around the water. There you go. You don't want is it is it easier for the electrician to work around the plumbing stuff or the plumber to work around the electrician? See, he can pull his wires anywhere. He can put them over here. He can go, he can go around. He can wrap, he can wrap a wire around one of the pipes. <laughs> So it's critical that you don't just call people out. And then I had one homeowner one time. He got mad at me because he said, I don't see nobody over here working. And I was like, well, I'm not going to call. I'm not. Okay, so the countertop guy hadn't gotten there yet. Are y'all with me? Y'all know what countertops are, right? So now if the countertops hadn't shown up, right, why should I call the plumber? Why should I call the plumber to come over there? Set the toilets. He'd he be done in 30 minutes. He'd be looking for something else to do. You got to make use of their time too, man. You, you want to get everything ready. You need the countertops there. You need the tub set. You need all the tile done. So that when you call that plumber out there, he got a full day or two day work that he don't have to stop. The last thing you want him to do is have to stop and then come back. Come back at some other time when you got the countertops in. All right, man, we, we did everything we can do, man, but you got to get them countertops in so we can set the sinks. So now he can't set the sink. And you know what else he's going to do, too? He's going to take you for granted. Because you didn't have it ready. You weren't ready. And then so the next time he, he do a job for you, he be like, he probably ain't ready anyway. So he's going to set, he's going to hold you back. He go, he go, and his mind go like, he probably ain't gonna be ready. So I'm just gonna, I tell him I'll be there next week because he got other stuff he can work on. He gonna put you on the side. That's why you just can't go out there and just start calling for, oh, I'm gonna get my flooring guy to come on. I just want to, I just like the guy, the guy just wants to see somebody working. <laughs> That's their mindset. And, and, but you as a builder, you can't let that mindset corrupt you. Just because somebody working don't mean they efficient. So now, not only, not, not only, not only, you still gonna have to wait because you ain't got the countertops in. You still gonna have to wait because the countertops in ain't in yet, and you still ain't got nothing done. <laughs> so you got to tell them, hey, look here. There's um, there's organization behind all this stuff. Trust me when I tell you that. Because you, you want your guys to come out, man. You got to look out for your subcontractor. You want those guys to come out there. You want everything ready when you call them in. And you want you want it ready for them to finish everything they can finish. You don't, you don't want them guys to point fingers at you. You don't want what well, you want ready. Just like uh, out here at this Fairfield job. The plumber came out there. And he was like, I was like, I, I kept asking Clay, hey, man, is it, is it done yet? Is it done yet? And then he come back and say, well, he couldn't finish because um, we didn't have water to the house. Well, see, you got to have, as a builder, if, if you're the project manager, you got to have all that stuff ready for him. Now, mind you, I think the guy should have told him, hey, man, you, won't you go on before we get started? Now, if it was one of my guys, he'd say, hey, we need power, we need water to the house. And I would have went ahead and had all that stuff before he even showed up. That stuff would have been ready. Um, but that was another way that he could procrastinate. Now he can sit around and be like, yeah, he ain't got water to die. So that, so now he like, yeah, that's saving me because I couldn't get to it anyway. That's not what you want, guys. Guys, it is a timetable. 
and it identifies the the activities that must be accomplished to reach a certain goal um, or objective. So that's what scheduling is, guys. Um, this is when the schedule, guys, at the pre-construction stage, construction stage, and post-construction stage. That's when you go schedule. And I sit down. I just met a guy. I just met the guy here. Um, we, we're gonna get started on him. And I, I just met him out here I, I, on his site, just to tell him how this thing gonna work. Pre-construction phase stage. This is how everything ain't gonna play out, buddy. Good guy, by the way. That's that guy. Yeah, he's good as go. Very straightforward. I can deal with person like that. People that know what they want, we can work. Um, this right here is what you call, let me see, construction project process. Key projects, activities should be indicated on the construction schedule. Now, this right here is kind of like a uh, Gantt chart, man. I, I'm sorry, man. This right here is kind of ugly. This is an old textbook picture. This right here. It's in that book that we got. Um, but you can kind of see, um, right up here at the top, these are dates. These are dates up here. The building, say building start, um, uh, build, building, um, Building tight. So you got your um every time you got a delay. Now my 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 let me just go to my thing right here. I quit messing with the schedule and stuff. I just try to go as fast as I can now. I gotta go to a job though. Let me see if I got my job here. 8032. I think I did try to schedule that one out. Let me see how that how that one did. So you can kind of see where let's see. There we go. So you can see kind of how I did this Gantt chart right here. So, so this is the timetable right here. This is when I got every, when I get stuff done, you can kind of mark it up. So I got the um, so on August, August the 26th, we started site work. Y'all see how that Gantt chart works? Um that's who birthday. August? Huh. You won't believe when my birthday is. 25th. <laughs> You're Virgo. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. People, people who are people who birthdays are close to mine are very similar to me. So that, that's probably why uh, I told you to go talk to my son, man. You 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 probably very similar to yeah, we'll probably have a similar thought process. Uh, so keep doing what you're doing, man. You be there, man. Um, um, sometimes if you think you got, sometimes you think it's tough on you right now, man, and you just keep keep grinding, man. Um, uh, I was looking at a. I know I'm kind of getting off subject. I'm sorry, but um, they had a they had a, a TikTok video. It, I don't think it was TikTok. It was like YouTube short or something. And it had this guy, man, I, I wish I could pull it up, man, but it had this guy, he was walking down the street, man, and, and, he, and, and the thing was me 10 years ago and me today. But he had the guy walking down the street. He was just, you know, he was just slumped over, man, just walking down a lonely road by himself. And then he had the one today pulled up in a truck, nice truck, pulled up to him. And he had, had the kid, had the girl in the car with him, man. And he looked at him 10 years ago and said, hey, just keep doing what you're doing. I wish, yeah, he, he was like, hey. Because, you know, he's looking at him, he's like, damn it. He said, just keep, keep doing what you're doing. Guys, I like to think about it like this right here. And I, I know I kind of got, I'm going to get back on the subject in just a second. I always think, and I told my son this right here too. I told both my boys this. I said, look at yourself. I want you to imagine this right here. You guys are in a car. 22 years old. Driving in a car, right? And right next to you is yourself at 80 years old. You with me? So you're riding in a car with yourself. But you're 22. This guy over here is, that's you at 80. Your job is to do what you got to do to make his life easy. That's what your job is right now. Your job is to, you got to fight, claw. 
I don't care what else you do. You, you might have to work 60. I tell my son, 60 hours a week, buddy. You got to do what you got to do. Stack your money. You know, try not to get off and all. You know, I, I know you, you got your girlfriend, stuff like that. Hey, man, it is what it is. I, I get it, man. But hey, man, focus on you. You're number one. Focus on you. You got to get yourself good because you're driving that car. You got to make sure this guy's okay. Because this is the only time you got. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? You take care of that guy. But you got to do it right now because he's going to be too old to do it. But this right here is a Gantt chart, guys. So you're going to you kind of scroll through. And some things, some things don't, don't depend on other things. It's kind of how, you know. And so you got right here, man, a lot of stuff going on right here, buddy. You see that? A lot of stuff going on right there. Let me let me get over here. It's right there. So, so this is how that thing works. And you got to, this is just a visual representation of the schedule. That's what it is. Okay. That was a Gantt chart. Too. Correct. This is a, this is a Gantt chart too. No, this, I'm sorry, this is a Gantt chart. Uh, they call it the bar chart. There's no, another word for it, the bar chart. This right here is the, uh, okay, uh, I think all of them are Gantt charts. But this is what it looks like. So it's a, um, so it's, um, bar chart schedules or Gantt chart, um, linear balance network based bar chart and matrix schedules, network schedules. So, you know, you kind of see how things operate, man. So, you know, as you move through, these are things that needs to get done. You got to make sure it gets done within that time. Bar charts do not show activity relationships. Now, mine do. Mine, God, dog, I, I had one of them where if you, say, for instance, you can't, you can't schedule the roof. You can't schedule the roof being put on if it hadn't been framed. Does that make sense? So there's a relationship with framing and roof. The roof have to be after the frame. Does that make sense? So that's the relationship between the two. So you gotta, mine will do that. I can actually go in here and I can take a, let me just, let me see, can I? I have to do one of the jobs. I, hate to, I don't like to mess, mess it up because I didn't do it originally. So if I took, um, let's take this, take this little house over here. So if I take this guy right here, I'm gonna put the schedule out here. So if I took that, now I can take this thing and I can I can pull it. Let me see, I can pull this bad boy. I had to set the date up. If I if I set the date, I, I can make these things connect with one another. Yeah, I can make them connect with one another. So I can make it to where you gotta, you gotta have, you gotta have the plumbing before the electrical. I can't make mine connect. I can't show the correlation between the two on here. I just hadn't done it in a while because I spent so much time with other junk that I really shouldn't be spending time with. I, I could be mastering this right here software. Then now this right here is a, uh, what is right here? This is a method, scheduling method. This is a method chart. So uh, since the slope of the individual activity line reflects the rate at which the activity will be accomplished, Repetitive operations can be visually planned. I don't like that, man. Yeah, this right here kind of confusing to me, but I get where they're going with this right here. Some of these things, you know, is moving and some of these things move slow, you know? I don't like that. So, I mean, you got, if, that, if that's what you, some people think like that, man. I mean, I, I just, that, that looked weird to me. Um, project planning and scheduling. You know what I'm saying? The organization and content of this presentation is based on a scheduling seminar. One of the authors teaches for the RS Mains Company, David Pierce, whatever his name is. So what is he doing? I don't know what that is. Was he construction schedule? It's a series of task activities arranged in a logical order, which is what y'all saw right here when I did when I did when I did this right here thing. When I did the estimate thing, you can see my little order that I have. This is my order. Slide this down. This is my order right here. Um, it says depicting a start time, showing activity durations, indicating the completion time. 
And guys, one thing that you gotta, you wanna try to get things done on time, guys, but you gotta be realistic about the completion. Be realistic, guys. Don't, don't lie to folks and tell them, well, you're gonna be in there six weeks. That's the last thing you want to do. Man. Promise, over promise, man. No, you don't want to do that, guy. Matter of fact, if it were me, and I know it's going to take me, typically a house will take me about eight months to build. D these newer houses we got. I go ahead and add two more months on to it. I tell them it's going to take me 10 months. Because, of, what's up, man? Because if, if, I, if I tell them 10 months, it's going to take me 10 months to build it, and I get it done in nine months, I'm the hero. But if I tell them it's going to take me eight months to build and it take me nine months, they're going to hate me. Because they're not already playing and already told their family members, oh, we're going to move in our house. He told us it's going to be in, <laughs> in, in eight months. We're going to move in in August. See, that's why, yes. But yeah, now you put, so, so, what I'm saying is, yes, weather. You can't control that, right? That's why it really should take you about six months, right? But I'm going to say eight months because I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a calculate in weather. You see what I'm saying? You got to give them some. But now I'm going to tell them 10 months. I'm going to give myself another two months. Especially if you're trying to start building. Uh, if, if you're starting in April, uh, like right now, what's happening right now? It's raining all the time. So now you can't get your puddings in. Or in the winter. It's too cold to pour concrete. You know? So you got to... See, these are the things you got to be planning, man. That, that's why you got to plan this. You got you to gotta be looking at it. And then you got to tell them, hey, look, you know, why don't we start, you know, if it's January, February, March, what's, what's, what's March, which one got the showers? <laughs> January, February, March, April. So we start getting a lot of water right now, right? Um... I tell them they're starting the summer. Might want to push them off a little bit. Wait on them. Um, but if not, just tell them, hey, just extend the time. Hey, you know, it's going to be raining a lot, so it's going to take a little longer. But go ahead and establish that up front, man. Don't, 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 don't try to retract. People are not forgiving today, guys. They're just not. So completion time, man, you got to be careful of that. Schedule objectives, guys. So determine the project completion time. Determine critical activities. You know, the major things are going to be like frank foundation, framing, roughs, maybe sheetrock, um, exterior, product, landscaping, Flooring, um, trim, and finishing. Those are critical. And guys, I'm gonna tell you now what I start doing with my with my, with my new contract. I I get draws on the critical parts. Once I get the critical parts done, that's when I want my check. I got my framing done. I need my framing check. That's when I pay myself. Pay myself. I pay myself during the duration of the um, project guys. Now, I don't want you that if you guys got a project, unless you got something like, like decks and stuff like that, um, you know, it shouldn't take you no more than about a week to do them things. But if you got a major project, like a commercial job, a light commercial or residential, you better get paid all during the process. No, 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 I knew you were gonna say that. Why, why, do, why, why do you think it's not a good idea for you to wait until That's not a good idea. Y'all agreed on the amount. Y'all agreed on the amount. Well, they ran out of money. Yeah, you agreed on the amount. But we out of money. So you did all that work, and you're not going to see nothing. Because they done ran out of money. That happens. Now you got to sue. But now you didn't get no money. You ain't got no money to sue. <laughs> you did all that work, man. And you might not even see a check at the end. 
Get your money while you pay. Get your money while you're doing it. Unless you're doing a smaller job. If you're doing like one thing, like, you know, like I said, with, with, with Mr. Scott, he does decks. You do your decks, you could probably wait and get you. When you're done with it, we do a walkthrough. Everything good? Everything good? All right, here go you. Here go your boy. Go and give me a check. Or if it were me and I was him, I would at least get a, you know, maybe, you know, I don't know, man. I, I'm kind of, you know, smaller jobs, man. I'm kind of iffy about down payment. But now on a house, man, yeah, you got to, I got to, I got to have a down payment. You know? and, the, and and usually, guys, if you connect it with a bank, they're going to give you, they're going to give it to you. They, they're going to, they're going to ask you, what do you need for your down payment? And I try to get about 10, 15 if I can. And I always want to stay ahead of my, I want to stay ahead of the people. I want to always have more money than they got in it. You see, that that holds them. You know, that money, man, that money is powerful, but that money is, boy, I tell you, boy, you can do some things. That money can control you. you need to play ahead of people. That means um, if, if um, let's say I did the foundation, right? And the foundation was ten thousand dollars, right? And my my part on the foundation was two thousand, right? So that's twelve thousand dollars. So I want to have that found before my guys even start the foundation. I want to have about fifteen thousand dollars in the bank from them. You see, so I'm ahead of them. That guy ain't even did the work yet, but I got the money. You see what I'm saying? Oh, I, I need to always try to stay ahead of them. If I'm staying ahead of them and, and something goes south, my guy can at least get paid and I can get paid for supervising. So at least I get paid and he get paid or she get paid. You want to make sure your guys get paid. Your subcontractor. Make sure they get paid. I, 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 you, you don't really, you want to have their money in the bank waiting. Sheep rock guy coming out that they, they check already there. And then when they get done with it, oh, here you go. You did it right. Here you go. But you don't want to be, you don't want to be sitting around waiting on them to put a draw in the bank and your guys need their money. Cause they will, cause the homeowners will hold you out. They're like, oh, we're getting that way. And they keep holding you out. They try to do, they, man, I'm telling you, man, I had a guy, I had one job. I just had to stop work. I'm not going to do anything else. I told my son, you go over there, you're going at your own risk. So I know, man, identify which activities can be delayed. Now, sometimes, like I said, you can't delay certain things, man. Like, if things don't work out, man, I don't get all bent out of shape because we can be working on something else. Okay. Use as a tool to manage a project. Okay. Use as a tool to manage a project. Scheduling uses. Let me see. Owner program planning. What if analysis? You know, that it, I, I think I got a little chart here that talks about what ifs. If, it, if this happened, you go, you go here. Um, project coordination. These are these are scheduling issues, guys. Analyze and document project changes, guys. And that's one thing that can really throw you off. Change orders, man. You want to keep them down to a minimum. Every time they want to change them, you know, I I I, I make it hurt. You want to make this change order, man? That's going to cost you seven hundred dollars. Just even think about it. <laughs> I don't want to do them suckers, man. Resource management, project reporting, and monitoring. So always monitor your project, man. Guys, monitor them things, man. The critical path. This right. This is the critical path. I think I got it. Say break a job down into manageable small parts, guys. So that's what you're going to be doing. Uh, analyze each part for time and resources. String them together in sequence. And I thought I had a path thing to show you, like, the critical path to go through. I think I might have a. Let me see, diagram for how to indicate logic sequence order of uh, work. All right, here we go. Let me see. This is a demo diagram right here. So like you got a, you got activity B cannot start until activity A is complete. You remember I just got finished talking about that? That's what you want to keep in mind. And, and I can do this all on my Legant chart too, by the way, guys. 
Uh, activity A must be completed before B and C can start. So you got these, these right here. They can't nothing happen until that get done. And this is another one. And you can draw these little charts here. C cannot start until A and B are completed. I wish I had an example of something like that, man. Let me see. Um, God, uh, I'm trying to think of an example. Something that's kind of like that. You just can't. Yeah, you can't. You can't do your plumbing until your countertops and your cabinets are put in. I know you doing no plumbing. You can't work around it. Mm -mm. You can't. How you going? How can you work around it? You can't finish the plumbing. So the plumbing final can't come out until your cabinets and your countertops are done. And all your flooring is done. Because you're going to set the toilets and stuff. You're going to set it on top of the finished floor. Keep that in mind, guys. Key question to ask when establishing sequence, guys, is uh, what must go before the activity? That's why you guys got to know how to build. So y'all got to get in that steady guy, man. Matt got my steady. McKinley got my steady guy, man. So he he's trying to take that test this month. He missed about three points last time. So. Huh? No, no, not that one. There's, a, there's another book. He got that one. He got this ring binder. But um, yeah, he, he's gonna he's gonna take that thing. Hopefully, he get it this time. What must go after the activity? What can go on at the same time as the activity, guys? So y'all gotta know that. Like I said, the only way you gonna know that is you gotta know. You, you, like I said, you gotta build one or two houses, man, for you to figure this out. Build you one or two of them. Yeah, I'm gonna build a total research. Probably about eighty, a little over eighty or something. The thing about it, man, I, uh, one of them, I, I guess I can't really count that, man, because I used to work for a production company. So the production company, man, we was building fast, man. We built fast. I built, I built several. I probably built about 40 something with them. And, you know, but then, you know, my, my extensive knowledge, you know what I learned the most about construction? I learned the most about construction when I was the building official for Alabaster. Said all these builders coming in trying to pull up permits and, you know, and, and then I had to go out and, you know, like I didn't have enough inspectors. You know, when I first got there, I didn't have a lot of inspectors. So I had to start hiring inspectors, but, but I'd get out there, man. And, and, um, I had to go do a lot of the inspections. So what I had to do, I was, and guys, I, I was meticulous on the code. That's when I really got in the code book because I had a lot of builders trying to pull stuff over me. Oh, man, we can do this right here. And then I started getting that code. I was dangerous when I got in that code book, buddy. I went down to um, I went down down in um is it Orange County. I had a building official seminar, and they trained me well, buddy. I figured that code book out there. And then I started figuring out that everything is a system. Every is the structure. That whole code book is just a structure. All you gotta do is learn the structure. It, it's just like you're building a house. If you look at the code book, one, chapter one, administrator, chapter two, definition, chapter three. Um, you know, preparation, <laughs> chapter four, you know, foundation, chapter five, floor, chapter six. You see what I'm saying? Walls. You see what I'm saying? They, they just build on the house in the code book. When I started realizing stuff like that, it was easy out there. All right. What is the CPM job calculations? Let me see. Goals of, goals of the calculation procedure. That's what it is. Goals of, no, that's not what it is. To find starting times for all activities, to find overall job duration, to find critical activities. Early start. These are just some definitions right here. Early start. ES means early start. And EF means early finish. Build, late start, late finish, total flow. All right, guys, how to plan a project, guys, you want to review the Historical data, review contract. Guys, always keep looking over your contract, too. That's another thing, too, man. Keep, I have that contract. It, it, listen, you better have that contract, man. You better read that contract, and you better know that contract. You better know your, boy, you better know your contract. Uh, if you don't if you don't feel like doing all that, you can hire an attorney and give it to them and let them know your contract. But I would want to know my contract. Because when I'm talking to the homeowner, you can regurgitate some of that stuff on the contract. 
Well, my contract said don't talk to my subcontractor. That's in my contract. My contract says that the homeowners don't need to be engaged and don't be seeking jobs for the subcontractors. When I bring them on site, don't leave them alone. I had one builder friend of mine, man. If his homeowner came to the job site, the subcontractors had to leave the house and get in their truck. That's how bad he was on the lawn. Why would that be a problem, by the way? Homeowners talking to the subcontractor. Right. Mm -hmm. Anybody at home? Why would that be a problem? For a contractor, a subcontractor, to be talking to the homeowners. Well, if the subcontractor say something, that homeowner is going to take their word for it. And they don't know how the whole house goes. They just don't understand what they're doing, right? And not only that, they'll worry the homeowner. This right here ain't done right. That's, that's what they do. They try to point fingers and stuff. See, this right here, man, because he, he couldn't get his stuff in. He couldn't think how to get his stuff in. He put them, but see, they, they got the sheetrock messed up, man. I, I could get my trim in, but they, the, the painters didn't do that right there, right? So he deflected this stuff on them. And so now the homeowner, they, they worry about the whole thing now. That's because it's joking talking. He just needs to shut his mouth, keep that in his mind, and tell me when I get out there. Then when I get out there, let me call the painter on the, the sheetrock person. They don't need to say, now I had a plumber just did that over here at this site, man. There was some water in the house. He, oh man, you know, you got water. Because he up under the house, you know, putting, putting the pipes and stuff together. And the homeowner come out there, he talked to the homeowner. Well, this is what you need to do. And he and he going over how to fix it. So I got what the homeowner going to want. She's going to want me to fix it the way he said fix it. But we have to talk with him. I told Play, I said, look, man, you can check him or I, you can check him or I can check him. Man, I got him. I got him. He didn't want me to. <laughs> I told him today, man, I said, man, I'm going to have to get, I'm gonna have to get away from these people. That's why I got my son into the game, because he's a, he's a whole lot easier to deal with than me. And that's a good thing. You know, he 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 can talk. He's friendly. Um, he he's approachable. Got that face that people can deal with. So I I just look angry. I've been looking angry all my life. I ain't because I'm mad. I be thinking all the time. But but he's probably a little bit more approachable than me. So. Well, my stern nature can run customers. Off. Customers can't deal with that. Customer not. I was finna relate this to relationships, but but we're not. I'm not gonna go there. Um, no, man. Customers don't. They they don't. Just like if, if if you're in a household with with two parents, and your dad, you already know he's gonna say no. And your mom is, you know, she pets you all the time and buy you stuff all the time. Um, if you want to go hang out with your friends, who you gonna ask? That's what you're gonna do. Because you already know this guy right here. So just think about this in in in, in the aspects of a customer. Customer got a builder that just, you know, just happy and you know. And you got one that, you know, yeah, he he's gonna keep it in order. He gonna he gonna keep it in order. He ain't gonna let you go over budget, but he's gonna get the thing done. The other one, you just gonna kind of know. He's he friendly though. But they're gonna pick that friendly person. So there's a yeah, there's a certain balance. The, the, the ideal scenario would be to, would be to have a balance of the two. But I done already got pulled over to the dark side. <laughs> was it the dark side? You know, and I'm too far gone. I'm like, Anakin, you don't, you don't look at it. You probably don't look at Star Wars. Uh, you, yeah, I'm like, Anakin, I, I didn't, you know, they, they got me when I was too young. You know, I was, you know, I was too young. I didn't, I didn't get the training I needed. So I got pulled over to the dark, to the dark side. <laughs> you can't train me to be one of the nice guys. All right. Guys, now, I can't tell you how critical this one right here is. Communication. I told that guy the other day, look, man, we're going to talk at least once every two weeks. And if you, there needs to be an open line of communication. And you need to 
you need to be the type of person. And that's that's another thing, man. If if I'm very stern, people don't really want to call me. They don't really want to deal with me. Um, but if you know, so that that hurts the communication because if people are afraid to talk to you, I can't see what's wrong. So you you like I don't want to call him. He's gonna go off, you know. Um, but then how am I gonna know that there's a problem? And then you don't want you don't want things to keep going and lingering and lingering until all of a sudden the straw breaks the camel back and boom it just explodes. So that's not what you want. That's really what you don't want. Okay. So, but you got to communicate. That's 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 the key to this whole thing right here, man. That communication. Um. Break the job down into its component parts, like I, like I did on that thing. Figure out how long each part should take. I did that on a Gantt chart. Decide the sequence of construction, and also figure out how long the job as a whole should take. And breaking down the job into activities, let me see, small manageable parts, individual tasks must add up the whole thing. What is that, 2080 rule? What is the 2080 rule? What, what is that? Over 2080? Y'all don't want to hear my 2080 rule. Let me see. I know that 20% of, of the real estate agents are making 80%. They're they doing 80% of the deals. Most things is 2080 rule. I have to come back. I have to rotate back. Activity types. General construction, procurement, administrative. Physical elements, trade, skills. Let me see. Contractual division. So these are the divisions that you're going to need too, man. Organization, responsibility, physical, or geographic area. Let me see how many, how many slides I got on this thing. I know I had this many slides. Oh, we're almost done. Let me see. Action, building elements, location, separating the activity. We already talked about that. Separating the work items, separating areas. The concept of level of detail. General phase, specific physical elements, detailed task list, tips on activity lists, brainstorming helps. Make a large list first, then coal. I don't know what coal means, but I can tell you, I tell my the owners that come to me, I tell them when you go out, when you go out on site, write down if there's a problem. Don't talk to the subs. Leave them alone. Write that stuff down. And you can keep it down. Now, if it's something that's really, really important, like something that they're doing that it'd be cheaper for me to undo it, uh, we got to mix up. You can you can pick the phone up. That's why you got to have the open line of communication. But write all that stuff down and give it to me all at once. Say, say for this week, write these questions down and then just hit it to me all at once. I don't want you picking up the phone calling me every 30 minutes. I had a customer do that, man. Just calling me. I mean, every time I turn around. I stopped answering the phone. I just I, I called it the husband and I said, "Look, I'm only going to respond to you. You, you. you, it's going to be me and you. We, we're the only person going to talk. I'm not going to talk to your wife either. Cause see, she's going to talk to me about something. He's going to talk to me about something. And then what's going to happen is, if there's any kind of inconsistencies between the two of them and us, then they're going to turn me into the bad guy. And that's what you don't want." So you just tell them, and it could be the wife. But I don't like, if it's me and, and um, me, me being a man, I don't want the, all the information being between me and the wife. That don't look good at all, guys. Now, don't, don't do that. Just talk to the husband. And you guys are going to find out if you got a married couple. If you guys, if you're building anything for a married couple, and you're dealing with the husband, well, there are going to be some things that that wife don't like, and she's going to sick that husband on you. That's what she's going to do. That's just the way it is. Every last one of them I've done has been that way. Or she want to exert her authority over you, she's going to get her husband to get you. And, and, and she's going to win, too, because he don't want to deal with her. Um, I'm a little different in my household. You know, like I, I don't let my wife, you know, my wife can't be I don't want you engaged in stuff like that, especially when it comes down with men and stuff like that. No, I got I got this covered, man. Don't come to me crying about this right here. I got it covered. Uh -oh. 
do a preliminary list. This right here is all, this right here is do a preliminary, preliminary list, then refine. Um, that's kind of like the punch list. I think that's the main punch list. All right, planning the sequence of work, establish the logic sequence of all tasks necessary. We've been talking about this since we've been prior to relationships, physical, managerial, administrative, development of the overall logic diagram. Go from the general to specific, go from large to small, go from phase to structure to task. God, I didn't know I had all these things here. Let me see. Tips on establishing work sequences, consider the perspective of the on-site superintendent. Never let the computer dictate sequence. Now you control that. Remember that scheduling is a creative process. Oh, I didn't, hold on, man. No, no, let me check that. It didn't seem like I had this many things on this right here, didn't it? Let me see. Oh, yeah, hit me. How do you well, you got to understand, I designed the build exact software to operate the way I know how to build. So I just, I, I pretty much just told the computer what to do. That's why I set it up in that order, because I know what's going to happen. I know how things go. I, I done done enough, and that's where experience come in. At. My experience as a builder. What if you got like a mini project? Not building a property manager, so I have many projects to build. Not building old houses, many renovations. How yeah. Each one of them have to be done separately. If, you, if you're over here at this address, you got you to gotta sit down and look at that and come up with a plan on what needs to be done and how it needs to be done. Then you got to consider what needs to go before who, or who needs to go last, or who needs to go first, who needs to go in between. But each pro, each each project should be as has its own schedule you can't schedule this project like the same way you got this project going on you're doing something totally different so you got to sit down it's, it's got to be individualized there's no one shoe fits all let me see let me see labor hour productivity no that's not what I want. adjustment calculating time round up all times ensure productivity this is more for commercial right here more than one type of work in the activity, not all scheduled work time is production time. Let's see what this labor. Now this is more bar charts. How to communicate schedule? These are the ways that you communicate schedule, guys. Use bar charts. Don't overlap people with information. No, I'm sorry. Don't overload people with information. I have to. I have to. I have to catch myself on that kind of stuff too, man. So I can just keep going and going and going. And let me tell you something, guys. When you go on these sites, shut your mouth. Don't need to be there just talking and going on and on and on. If the homeowner asks you about this right here. Well, what about this right here? You think it'd look good if I have a fence back here? Yeah, it'd look good. You know what you just told them? You're going to build them a fence. That, that's what they heard. So you guys got to learn how to just be quiet. You know, just be quiet. It's okay to just shut your mouth. And write things down, and I get back with you. That's what you need to tell them. Let me look at it, and I get back with you. Well, can you do this right here? Let me. I'm gonna, let me get this right here, but let me get back with you. And then that way, you have enough time to go sit down and think about what they just asked. Let me write down what you're talking. About. I'm gonna get back with you. Then I would send them an email. I would write it down. I send them an email explaining what I did. And then I probably text them, and then I picked the phone up and called. Did you get that email? Okay, this is what we were talking about. Da, 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 da. So they got an email, they got a text, and they got it, they got it all. So they can't say that they didn't get it. That's how you deal with people. Now you got all kind of paperwork and document. What they what they say? Cover your tail. Okay. C Y T. All right, meet regularly to review results and plan. That's why I talked about that earlier. Who will use the, the information? What will they need to know? Da, 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 da. Monitoring and controlling the project, guys. Good initial, good initial plan. Um, events occur to alter the plan. Project manager must be able to deal with these changes. So when stuff go wrong, you gotta be, you gotta be able to pivot. 
it didn't go the way you needed to go, you got to be able to look at it, figure it out, make a decision. Um, I usually monitor my progress, man. Determine present status, behind, on time, ahead. I'm behind on this fat for your job. The woman keep making changes. Subcontractors are delayed, man. They just, uh, you got to get this stuff done. Uh, how does present affect the future? Steps in updating. Yeah, let me see. How... Where to find progress information when we get that? Compare progress goals. It didn't seem like I had all this stuff, didn't it? Jeez. Let me see if anything I missed that uh that will probably be real important. Let me see. Consult with all personnel, display information in the clearest possible way. Communicate regularly. We talked about communication. What to look for in project reports. Uh, analyzing the job status, baseline, target, schedule. Do not display float. Uh, okay. All right, guys, we're going to stop right there. Can you dig it? Is everybody good? Anybody got questions on anything? You got anything, man? You sure? Yeah, I'm, 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 it's going to come in two. Guys, remember this right here is going to come in two separate videos because I had, I stopped it. Well, I hope I still I got both of them on there. How'd you enjoy the um building that stuff? You feel a little bit more comfortable now, don't you? Yeah, it's, it's, see, it, it just takes time, man. You got to get no, no, you ain't get you ain't behind. Just um, yeah, it's just gonna take time to be you know dealing with that stuff. All right, guys, you guys have a good day. Good.